Let's go. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to press live. I was having my last sip of tea. <laughs> Completely so unnecessary. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, well, hello and welcome to the player ratings after the Blues beat the Richmond Footy Club. We are doing the ratings a little later than usual. Obviously, we have the buy in round two, so it gives us a little bit more of a runway to get some of this content out. Also, the Hall of Fame function was on Monday. We toyed with doing the this show as a pre-recorded show, but it's just not the same without you in the audience. So here we are on a Wednesday night. Pommy, hello, and what is going on? Hey, I'm good, Taz. How are you, mate? Hey, you, you, you were at a posh function. I, I, I was, I was you on Monday. Yeah, yeah. which was a nice change for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I talk less. You know, one of my mates watches our Monday show, and he was like. He's known me 25 years, and he was like, that's the least I've seen you talk since your pop died. So, uh, <laughs> so, so there you are. That that was his genuine concern. We <laughs> Monday night. He's like, you, you didn't say much. So, yeah. No. Yeah, my, my secret is, um, it's not really a secret. Just ask questions and listen and reply. <laughs> it was, so it was, it was a nice change for me, to be fair. Nice change. So, no, uh, um, good to be back. And this is my favourite time, but it's a weird time because usually we're talking about a preview of the game at this stage, aren't we? Yes, definitely, definitely. So this will not be happening probably for the rest of the season, to be honest. Um, Wednesday is well and truly time to move on to the next game, except for when you have a bye. I mean, we may do this when we have our next bye, but I like to get the review done like... Sunday, Monday at the latest, um, and also gives us a lot more context, the player ratings. But but like Carlton, like Voss saying that they're by, they're going to get better. Yeah. The extra break made Pom add something that makes the ratings better, chat. Like, no way. Like, like, like Carlton blew abroad. They're just like that. We're just, we're just mirrored. Mirrored, do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. Voss watches us and goes, "That's it, boys. You're getting That's better as well." Well, we're looking for excellence, as Vossi said. So, uh, yes, we guys last week we showed you the, the heat maps and the updated graphics. Pommy's gone to another level. Before I show it, Pommy, can you explain what you've actually done and see if it sticks? Okay, so we we have added a radar chart. So what you will see when the players come up is a radar chart. So a radar chart is effectively, if you're American, and I assume Australians do copy American English more than English 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 English, you may refer to it as a spider graph as well. You may have heard that term at high school, at university. So a POM, it's a radar graph. But effectively what you're seeing is what the algorithm looks for in five different indicators. And that's basically the core score we judge them against. And that will be a big orange hexagon, right? Pretty much. It'll be an orange hexagon. And then what they scored in them separate categories, each category is 15 individual stats correlated into it. So five times 15 really quickly is 75. That is what you see as a whole picture. You'll see it. And then it'll, it'll be a warped thing. So we're looking for perfect. We're looking for a double-sized hexagon that would be close to 10. Do you know what I mean? There is different ways which you'll see tonight. When someone gets a nine, it won't go like that. But in an ideal world, if they're really well balanced, you will see two hexagons on the screen or one bigger blob than the orange. So this helps you if you're a visual learner. So to get really boring... In sport, when you're working with golfers, golfers aren't very smart, believe it or not, some of them. So if you say something statistically to them, they just look at you and go, okay. But sometimes when you show them something visual like this, they can start to understand the numbers through their eyes. So this could be something that if you aren't a numbers guy or girl, you're a picture, visual format learner. This may help you kind of get a little feel for what they did. Yeah. Your minds are about to be blown. My mind was blown. It might take some getting used to, but that's okay. Um, I like this. This is the kind of vibe that we're looking for for those of you at home. Um, 
Actually, I'm curious before we start, how many of you watch this on your TVs? Like, do you Chromecast this onto your TVs and like use this as like a TV show? Uh, but Jason's had a long day with the Guinness in hand, popcorn ready. Uh, yeah, Stephen, best free entertainment going around. Yes, it is free. Well, you know what? We ask for one thing, one thing. Doesn't cost you anything other than maybe a little bit of effort. And that is to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, tell a mate, bring a mate along. Um, this, what you're B-Y-L-B. about to see. Yeah, what you're about to see, I don't think exists anywhere else. I haven't yeah. seen one in AFL. So I, it could be Australia's first. You never know. I, I, I could. I could have brought the radar chart to Australia. Who knows? This could be it. This could be my retirement chart. This could be it. So we're going to show you the first player. We're going to go through every player. If you're new to the player ratings, mate, you're in for a treat. We're going to go through every player. We're going to see where they stack up and relative to their position to every player in the league. And uh, they'll have a rating at the end. You get to guess as we put their heat maps and their stats up. You feel free to guess what you think the rating will be. Then the rating will come up. All right, Pommy, let's begin. First player on the board is Lewis Young. I'm glad we're starting here. Um, let's talk about Lewis Young, and then you can talk about the um, the hexagon. Let's talk about Young, baby. Yeah, so as you can see, remember, blue is elite, yellow or a murky orange. Murky orange is a, a decent average yellow is bang average and if you see an asterisk it means you've had the best on the ground as a team as a team um and reds we're not looking for reds here but as you can see i had to pick on lewis young because i know everyone says oh he got battered by danaher last week and he got battered by lynch this week and you know what the the numbers do mirror do mirror up um because tom lynch had a 74% one-on-one win ratio. And as you can see, 74 plus 26 is 100. Um, So Lewis Young did lose that battle. But I do want to talk about this gentleman here because I copped a little bit of hate on the the review for saying, I'm going to give him a shout out. Mm -hmm. Paolo's just copped a bit of hate by saying he was good, right? Now, I want to analyze this. This is the first half all of these one-on-ones, right? The ones that he won were when he went back to spoiling in the second half, which this is a big thing for Lewis Young. He seems to be appalling at the moment at judging when do I mark and when do I spoil? And I think that's part of playing the game. I think that's part of reading it. And I do think, I don't think he is the last line of defence. I think in an ideal world, Jacob Wietering is taking the big dangerous guy. And that's going to be targeted so Lewis Young can feed into it. But I do want to shout him out because that last half, he was under the cosh. And you know what? Although he wasn't brilliant and he isn't going to get brown low votes, it takes balls to get battered early doors and then stand up when the game is on the line. And as you can see, when we look at the, the radar graph, we'll call it Pondar. There we are, right? You'll see orange... That's what we would be looking for from a balanced player. So someone that is literally bang average at this spot. So that that's the top 40% in the AFL. And you can see there, Lewis, everything's leaning towards the effort indicator. But very interesting, the output, the back end of that hexagon's not existing. As you can see, like, there's no... So what that's telling us is a hell of a lot of effort for not the greatest outcome. So that could mean a new, numerous things. Do you know what I mean? It could mean what I described. He's tried his ass off till the end and finally broken through and the numbers didn't quite help him in the first. Or it could be that he's not AFL level. I think if you looked at that graph last year, week, it would have been almost a hexagon where everything was just in the right place. The effort mirrored the output. But it, it was a tough game for Lewis. And Tom Lynch is very good. I think people forget Tom Lewis. Lynch is premier class. Yeah. No, look, I liked what you said about him in your review. I like that Paul gave him a bit of a, a, a pat on the back. And I think it shows a, a sign of a different a different message from the fan base. Uh, I mean, there's a really simple reality. There's no, there's, I mean, you can't, he has to play. <laughs> he 
he has to play. Um, he's not. He he seemed to not play with confidence. Seemed to seem to dip his head a little bit. And then, but the the point of him not completely losing his marbles as the game went on in the second half was was crucial. And the reality is, we need him when Weidering's not there. He needs to be in the team. Um, and that's just what it is. Uh, and that's where he's at right now. He, he's figuring out his confidence. Um, and once he gets that, once he starts playing with some force, he's got a really big frame. Um, he'll be better for it. So, yes, fair play to Lewis. Let's see how he rated. Uh, he was given a 5.5. That makes sense. Which isn't bad. I mean, we, we've, to be fair, it should be put in perspective. A 24% one-on-one -on -one ratio as a key defender, we're, we're in threes. So yeah. it just shows you how he managed to win that wrestle back and ultimately yep. break even mm. from where he should be. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Brody Kemp. Hasn't he started to tick along nicely? Led the team in marks, led the team in intercept marks. For the game, uh, it's it's. I feel like it's been a long time since the first practice match when everyone was losing their marbles about him. <laughs> I think see what you saw, saw about Young, and I think Jason makes a good promise. He tries not being cruel. He's not up to full speed. You can see that confidence to mirror what you and Davey said about the confidence that he has kind of taken the confidence very quickly and yeah. run with it. And this week, substantially better than last week. Also, substantially better positioning from Vossi. This week, which helps because they've only got one premier toll back, toll forward. It allowed Kemp to play that role, uh, less defensive responsibility, more offensive. And as you can see, look, you've got that nice little dip over the average AFL player in the offensive indicator. He's peeking into the roles. Effort indicators are maxed out. Overall, it really likes it, and it's that's a real nice third defender that where the hexagons pulling towards the defence and the effort. So, splendid game from him. He, he, he was pretty... He, you, you, you thought if that had Wheater in there, let's just say Wheater was there, you think that game could have been sensational as well because yeah. he probably wouldn't have been so under the cop at times. Yeah. This is a guy that no matter how he's performing, he still plays with confidence, which is what I really like about him. Uh, there was that play where he goes up for what would have been a nominee for mark of the round, surely. Uh, unfortunately, spills it. Dusty kicks a goal. Like In the moment, you're frustrated. Watching the replay, I'm thinking, the more repetitions he gets, the more games he plays, the better he will be at that um, and the better he'll be able to read that ball, uh, whether he's going to be spoiling that ball in the future or just being better at marking that ball. Uh, but yeah, he's he seems to be showing more and more signs every time he plays uh, of what he could become. There's still a lot... A lot of development to come for him, I feel. Um, but I, I like, I like Brody's first two games in in the way he's applied himself. Couldn't agree more, mate. He's he's a guy that could have struggled, and do you know what I mean? The only things that went against him, do you know what I mean? At times in this game, was he was a bit loose with his ball usage, which did account as two goals against because it was his poor decision making. But in a backline that was under that much cosh, yeah. in these key areas he's done very well so six is good he's got, he's got that dog. dog he's got that dog in him <laughs> all right moving on moving right along mcgovern mate mcgovern is wait i'm looking at the hexagon is that like one of the perfect games when your blue hexagon is better than the average orange hexagon in all areas that looks very symmetrical yeah, so if you think of Kemp's, it was kind of like a. It, it looked like you'd reversed over it. Uh, I mean, it looked like your neighbor's cat. Wow. But this here is showing that he's taken what AFL average is and he's gone boop, boop. Oh and my you can God. see, so we talked about Lewis Young six. Think of that. Look at his disposal efficiency. Firstly, look at the meters gained, most on ground, right? So there's not many players who play the intercept role, that have the most metres on ground at all. Mm -hmm. um, there's another guy who's pretty good. Tom Stewart does this. 
And funny enough, look at his hotspot. Tom Stewart, they always say he plays that high halfback role. This is where he is. He's in the hot zone for where the most score launches come from from opposition. So he's playing in the danger zone where if he makes a mistake, game over. Hard, mm-hmm. hard to do. Massive score launches. These are huge. Voss has changed that. We are now a score launch counter-attacking side. And again, intercept marks. This might surprise some people. Can He won it. But three is still verging on the very good as well. Incredible game from Mitch McGovern. And you know what? Jeepers. Like, wow. what a player. Yeah. Well, looks to be performing exactly how he looked body composition-wise in the preseason. Looks fit. Looks like he's got a bit of a spring in his step. Um, you know, when you when, when I pulled this up for the first time just now, the first name that came to mind for some whatever reason was Sam Doherty. You know, we've been talking over the last couple of last week or so about like, okay, Doc's gone. Who are the players that are going to fill those minutes or that void? That looks like a bit of a Sam Doherty heat map. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, spot on. We we we've you know what? Sometimes you come across a tactical genius move yep. when someone's not available, and Carlton have really got creative in this intercept role. And I'm not saying Doc's the reason Carlton are a good transition side. But I do think Carlton have had to change things around with Walsh not being there, Wheatery not being there. They can't rely on constantly winning the 50-50s. They've yeah. tried to be more ostentatious in their defence. And McGovern coming out of that hot zone and then saying, you know what, we're smaller now if you go over there, but we're more dangerous. And that has really worked. And there was a passage of play in the when they kicked two goals in a row. No, they had two shots that roll, one behind in the third, and it looked like the game was on tenter hooks. Mitch McGovern actually calls the meeting, which we haven't seen before. It was Mitch McGovern who grabs Saad, grabs Lewis Young after Lewis Young's poor tackle attempt, and he got broke. And you could see he was saying to them, you've got to back him up. You, you can't stray away. And that's a little bit of leadership coming in, Mitch. And you've got to remember, he's a dad. He's, he's a, a dad. husband. And he's been around the block. Yeah, you know I mean, he Daddy should be McGovern. confident now to say this is my backline. I'm really happy to be talking about McGovern like this. Really happy. I'm happy for him more than anything. Eight point five, a fantastic, fantastic. Ever since he had that beer and told me off, he's got better. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, that's McGovern. Next up, Saad, or should we say it's Ramadan Saad? It's a different type of Saad. There's no one like it in the league. It's phenomenal what he does built different built yeah. different is sad and also a massive change of his role this year as well he's he's been given the kid simpson 2019 role so yeah. dumped in the back pocket and we know that he's better work he's higher up the ground but again another reason Carlton's transition game is good because suddenly the first person with the ball in their hands is Presumably, Carlton's most dangerous at yeah. times. The most, I would say, he's the most feared. If I was a small forward, I'd be like, "This guy is a problem." And you can see, look, look at his little his his Pomdar graph. Look, massive sway to the offensive side. Five hundred and twenty-four meters gained. Look at that, the seven intercepts, and it's very interesting. The leader on ground, you'll be shocked who it is, and it backs up what we're talking about. But Carlton's attack of the ball. You mentioned it with Kent. We should never criticise these players when they make a mistake because there is a serious movement to if the ball is in dispute, just go and get it. And if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Went wrong for Kent. Saad a few times peeled off his man, leaving two players open to attack the ball. And if he missed it, game over. So Ramadan Saad, different kettle of fish. Different beast, yeah. Yeah, I... um... I mean, we spoke about it on Monday, had email on the show from all reports that was received very well. Um, Kyrie Irving hit the game winner the other day. He he was also fasting. Uh, there's something about Ramadan. Miracles happen. Um, when I watched the replay, uh, what stood out to me the most that I didn't pick up on during the game live was Saad's fourth quarter um, and how he lifted uh, in the fourth quarter in particular. And he seemed to be everywhere. So... Um, he was sensational. 
I, he... I did love the uh, plan as well from Richmond. They had a very cocky plan in the first, and they put they put I mean sorry in the fourth, and they put Rioli on him. Yeah, and we know Rioli's the name; it's X Factor, and that lasted seven minutes. Like Saad literally said, "Mate, this is the big school." Yeah, this correct. Is big boy team. Yeah, you're not a big boy he, team. He received an eight for his game. A fantastic effort. All right, Zachy Williams. Let's talk. Second game back. Uh, how did you see his game, and why is the orange? Hexagon, now bigger. So what this is here is it's just saying that nothing has gone massively over the six. So that is retrospective to what the highest mark is. So them effort indicators are judged out of 10. So they're judged out of 10. All of them 15 stats that go into it, they correlate that into a, a metric. So what you can see here is overall it's... Better than average, just. The mm-hmm. effort indicator, better than average. The defense indicator. This is the funny thing here. Look, that is Saad's old job. So yep. to accommodate this, they've gone Williams. So with Williams here, this was a different game. Carlton were looking to run the ball and get some yardage first. Not really Z Will's game. But I want to comment. Defensive pressure acts. This is something that we don't know about, sir, um, about Williams. And it's interesting how we're looking. These are just pure intercepts, intercepts from handballs that we're judging here. These are very high numbers for Zach Williams. So we're actually seeing a role change of this gentleman as well. We're seeing some defensive craft. And there was a couple of times he picked pockets because Richmond are horrible at that 55 metres out, just a little kick. And he was often understated his defensive work. But again, solid game for Zebra. We know him for his attacking flair. It's nice when... An attacking flair player gets a little bit of defensive kudos. Yeah. Well, they change from week to week. You know, last week, Saad was playing on Charlie Cameron for the majority of the game. We didn't see him involved in the offensive action as much. Um, That changed this week. And also with Zach, I mean, how many games do you think he needs before he feels his confident best? I would guess at least two months of footy to feel at his confident best into his routine again. I don't know. I'd I'd love to ask. I'd love to know when you come off a long-term injury, how long does that actually take for you to feel completely confident in in your routine again? Uh, Yeah, it's a tough question. I mean, I I think he looks fairly comfortable now. I I think a lot of it is where the ball is as well with Zach. Like for him to be sexy, Zach, we either need Carlton to be rubbish or targeting him and, do you want to target a halfback flank? Or, or if there's a kick in the corridor, you probably want to take that on. But again, a very good game. And this was mainly built on his defensive craft. So shout out to Zach, because shout if you to told Zach. me at the start of the year, you'd be getting above average for defence, I would have laughed. Yeah. So, All right. Let's move on. Nick Newman. Talk about an underrated game. Couldn't believe some of the slander I was seeing about Nick Newman after the game. I heard quite a lot, actually. One of the, my favourite things I heard was defenders defend. Yeah. Well, one of the most premier judgments, and if we're going back old school, we're going people smoking darts, wearing a woolly jacket, watching the game and saying, I know about it. One thing would be how many of the tackles. Seven tackles, zero broken tackles. So that's seven out of seven. That's 100% tackle rate. Mm-hmm. Most on ground for score launches. Just under 500 metres gained. And look at the defensive wow. pressure acts. So really interesting this. We'll come on to Acres, but we're actually seeing Zach Williams and Nick Newman play this role in tandem. That Zach, that Blake Acres and Ollie Hollands peel back behind them to help defend. And these guys take the man and they're actually working as traditional halfbacks looking for the, the ball on the deck. Nick Newman chases people from that position. He runs to them. Cam McIntosh took off a few times down the right-hand side, and he was first to the line to meet and greet him, where usually the halfback last year would have sat and waited and hoped a runner would come from the midfield. Newman's like, nah, I'm taking you, mate. And he, he caught him twice. And if you go back and watch that game, McIntosh was a bit of a problem in the first quarter. Yep. And Voss made that change and said, look, any attempt to make him kick quickly helps us. And this is Nick Newman's job, coming very quickly and saying, right, you're going to have to kick. And 
I, I was shocked when I said defenders defend. I was like, Jesus, he did look seven tackles. Yeah. Like, I thought he was sensational. Uh, particularly, particularly when things get really tight and tense, he he really has at some point over the last couple of years has really started to elevate and things get super contested and the pressure lifts. So an eight for Nui. As we move on to Ollie Hollands. Wow, we need a we need, we need a new nickname. The guy, the guy's a the guy's a red running machine. He just runs. He, he is, and we just talked about Nick Newman. Part of the reason Carlton are so successful is Akers and Hollands work incredibly hard. So you can see the very good numbers, like massive KMs, good tackle numbers, very good tackle numbers as well for a winger. Do you know what I mean? Very good. You've got especially the lightweight winger of the two. Mm-hmm. Again, the big thing with him is that like, we're judging him against other wingers and Carlton play a real strict wing system, which relies their high aerobic capacity. So this will probably come the meters gained and the balls, but I am really more import- really impressed by their defensive craft because it makes it hard and Voss is funneling teams into the corridor. That's where he wants them. And when Wheatering's there, mark my words... We could keep sides to less than 40 points very easy because he's a beast when it comes into the hot zones. And that, mm-hmm. that is a plan dedicated to our back line. So he's a huge part of it. So you can see Orange, we're looking for a bit more well-rounded winger. As you can see, offense, not much there. But look at that defense indicator through the charts. So that's, that's really helps you visualize, okay, the stats aren't saying Carl Amon, Ed Langdon. But why aren't they? Look at his pomegon or whatever we're calling it. There's a massive spread out away from it. So it's telling you what his role is. It's a defensive role first. Defensive Classic role. example. I think I was saying this last week. There are certain players you watch on TV and there are certain players you watch at the ground and you see two different types of games. I think Ollie Hollands is in that category right now. A lot of unrewarded running. Obviously, we'd love for him to win a little bit more of the ball. I feel like with this type of work rate and, you know, with development and experience, that will come. But the fact that he's got the the, the defensive side of his game at a really high level for his position now is a really strong foundation. It's really easy to fall into the trap with a guy like Ollie. And, you know, you ask for more, you demand more. Um, you ask the question... You know, is there somebody else out there that can win more of the ball? But I don't know if there's many players on the list or on this in this squad that can give us the work rate that he does around the ground. Not many players in world football, I think, yeah. that can run as far as he can with the ease. I mean, yeah. that's one of the scariest things. He's constantly top three for sprints as well. Yeah. So not only is he killing it in KM's run, he's changing the pace of his running for that entire 15Ks. Mm-hmm. Like, Running 15K is any idiot could do. Do you know what I mean? Get off your big bum and run. And you'll eventually, anyone can run a marathon. Try changing mm-hmm. the temperament. So an average winger's game with his output from the offense. But if you separate them, it's like an eight defense, three offense. So mm-hmm. very close to kind perfect. Of out. Okay. Next up, the skipper. Three brown low votes, if you ask me, mate. This is this was one of those uh you know we, we used to say oh I want to see Crips when he has like 75% handballs, you know, seven, eight tackles, getting everyone it was like the quintessential game that you want from Patrick Cripps. He was enormous. His body positioning, every part of his game I enjoyed, but mostly his his ability to lift when we needed it in each quarter. There there is something special about this man. There really yep. is. Um so many stats he was best in grounding. Ground ball gets, though, I think, a consummate Patrick Cripps. When the ball is in dis- dis- disrepute, who is the man? He is it. Intercept possessions, again, this guy was playing two ways and he was almost like an old school box to box soccer midfielder. He was just roaming that corridor and it's becoming the Cripps corridor. This defensive setup allows Cripps not to piss about anymore. It's like literally yep. Cripps. Anyone who goes from goalpost to goalpost, he's yours, right? This is your domain. And he is thriving in this role now of not being the linchpin of this side. 
is the king of the side. And them numbers, honestly, keep your 2019 Brisbane game. No one gives a fuck. This is yeah. the Crips I want. Look this at that. Is... Honda. It's so it, it's a perfect hexagon almost. This is it, baby. This is flag crips. Keep your brown low crips. I want flag crips. This is flag yeah. crips. It was a special game. He 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 looks so fit. He looks like he's covering the ground really well. Um, I mean, obviously, it's so early in the season. He doesn't look banged up like what he generally does as the season keeps going on, such as the way that he plays the game. Um, I feel like I noticed him. I mean, when I watched the replay, I noticed it for sure. But the handball receives, like he he was essentially running like a Sam Walsh getting handball receives in the middle of the ground. Um, and I think the body work that he he put on show for that play that set up Chera's goal um, was, I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to highlight it. I think I saw Saba highlighted it in his video. Um, really good effort against a really good Ruckman and to get that front position. And then he just has this ability. We said this at the end of last year. He has this ability no matter what. You can, you can tackle him from any angle. He's going to get the ball out. He always finds a way to get the ball out and you can't stop it. Mate, I mean, considering that he was top five for defensive pressure acts and he was ranked number two in forward 50 pressure acts as well, let that sink in. This wow. is a two-way running Crips, which wow. we haven't seen. And honestly, I'm telling you now, as close to perfect as you will get, a man that he controlled that game. And wow. just a big point, how often, go back through Crips's career, you can pick the good games. Now you're picking the good moments, the great yep. moments. And he stands up when yep. we need him. And the last captain I saw do that was Joel Selwood, a man mm -hmm. that I could watch 12 hours of football, but I could guess the highlight from the quarter just by what he did. And I was like, the way he lifts. The Crips yeah. now is just like, oh, shit, game's on the line. Tell you what, boys, stand back. Let's go and kill these mob. And then he goes yep. up a level and they can't follow him. Genius. Yeah. Love yeah, him. he is picking his spots now. Yeah, he is. And also, mate, fatherhood, Daddy Crips. We are about to enter into the Daddy Crips era. Look out. Changes a man, mate. Changes yeah. it. And it'd be scary when he holds that little baby in his eyes, how good he could be. Hmm. Could be exponential. Well, a 9.5 for the skipper. As we move on to Blake Akers, we talk about a guy that runs... Uh, and 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 plays with passion. Uh, how did you see Blake Akers, guys? Copy and paste Ollie Hollands. This was a very different game for our wingers where Carlton have had success through the corridor. So and it was they were having success through the wings. So Carlton really tried to stifle that off incredibly, 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 incredibly hard. And Blake Akers sacrifices his sex appeal with the ball, which we know he's good, for his defensive craft. And look at his defense indicator again, through the roof. Like, this guy is a good halfback playing on the wing. And you can see very good meters gained. Good inside 50 is still getting his job done there. But then you look at these, the pressure acts. There was four of them with desperation acts. So desperation acts are a point where if a tackle is missed or an act like a bump is missed, clear goal. That's last line. And look, again, the six marks. This guy is um, a problem for opposition because he's awkward. Like, watch him play. He's awkward. He, he's one of them players that, if you probably played him on a field, you'd look at him, walk up and go, <laughs> what a melt. Can't <laughs> wait to batter this guy. But then, he, then he turns into a superstar and you're like, how's he do that? And Blake's un unassuming. You know, he gives me, you know who he reminds me of at times? Mark Murphy. Explained. <laughs> that, if you're an opposition fan, you'd be like, oh, we've got our own Blake Akers. Ed uh, Langdon, shit's all right. over him. But then you actually watch him watch him. And you're like, yep. Langdon doesn't do that. Landon, Amon hasn't got that in the locker room. Errol yep. Golding doesn't have that. This guy does everything. Like, does yeah. everything better than most. So, yeah. I love Blake. My boy, yeah, I like him. The way he gets back at the right moment as well, um, and the, on that Before last line, 
when I linked him to Mark Murphy, Terry's yeah. like, what? <laughs> I'm still sensitive. I still love Murph. Uh, Blake got a six. Where's my man Richard at? Richard, I don't know. Where is your bobblehead? Did I say I was going to give you a Blake Acres bobblehead? You said this last week. I thought it was just like a gag. Uh, here we are, Terry. It's 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 happening. Here we Scandal. go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I don't think there is a Blake Acres bobblehead. That's that's the reality, Richard. But Matty Owies, pretty much exactly how we felt last week is how it played out. Against the Lions, it looked like he, he was a bloke that needed another week um, just to get some touch. And he looked, I thought he looked pretty sharp in this game. Right. We played a little game with this because in the software that makes these, you can manipulate, you can manipulate the what, what the thing looks like, right? Yeah. And it's almost a perfect hexagon if you just gave him the defense indicator and and that takes away from where it is. So always is, and this is the biggest compliment, biggest compliment I can ever give a human being. He is AFL average, and that sounds bad. But then you put it in perspective, to play the AFL, you're 1% in the country, and then to play every game, you're, you're 12% of the 1%. So we're talking 0.4, 0.3. We, we, we're really talking it. So to be AFL average, you're pretty freaking good. Right? Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's like calling a normal person a genius. And it's such a nearly game from him, right? It's such a nearly game. But always takes his opportunities. And this is a great benchmark. I love having always in the side. Happy birthday to the other day as well, Matty. But yeah. Durden looks at this kid and Motlop does. Motlop will go... I'm more exciting. I've got more skills. I've got more candy to sell. Durden will look at him and go, I can break a man in half. They've got the guy they've got to kill to have a long-term AFL career because this guy does everything just a tick. Yeah. Everything's a tick. And I reckon Voss will have him very high up in the in the order of picking because he knows what he's going to get. Yeah, Knows what he's going to get. He knows it's going to be a decent output. He's a he's a quintessential six point five kind of guy. Six. <laughs> no, you, you get what I mean. You get what I'm saying. Like he's he's that that. You know how we talk about if everyone had a six point five, would be a premiership team. He, he yeah. is average in the most complimentary way possible. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And and you you know what? I always think picking a team's like moving a house. You've got mates who are stronger, but the mates you want there are the guys who aren't going to ring you up five minutes before and say, "Me cat's dead." And then yeah. halfway through moving, you remember they don't have a cat because they're allergic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've done it. We've all done it. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> all right. A six for Maddie Owies. As we move to Cunners, that's an interesting heat map. Let's talk about Cunners. It is, and we're seeing that this is what I like to call a new term, the Walsh effect, the Walsh effect. Okay. No Walsh, down one rotation. You're trying to get Chera in the game. You're trying to get Crips into the game, which Voss has really done well with the rotations. When he can't work it out, he's switching players to get their hands on the pill. Connors is coming in there. There's another player we'll talk about later who's got a very similar heat map. And you can see it's the Walsh effect. There's no Walsh, and usually we'd have a permanent position. Really shifted around a lot, Connors, as you can see where he's had the ball. Then blue dots are where he's had the ball in the middle of nowhere. But, again, huge compliments. He isn't kicking goals. He isn't changing the game. But what he is doing is becoming the conduit. 82.3%. Mm. Nailed it. Pressure acts. Connors, two days, two two games ago, I don't think he knew what a tackle was. I said it at the time. You thought it was something Rex Hunt talked about on his fishing show. This guy now is bringing defensive craft to his game. So he adds the scoreboard pressure, like Damien says, brings that X factor, which I think he will when personnel are back. I don't think you'll see him play as deep at times. I think we've got something here. I'm really excited about what Connors can do because that's my one issue with Connors. When you don't hit the scoreboard, everything there. Go back last year, watch the rating show. Everything orange or red when he didn't kick a goal. Now, yeah, starting to see some colour. Do you think that evolves when Walsh comes back into the team? 
and he goes back more to a half forward. I do, yeah. I think I, I think he'll be less because usually what Ross likes to do is switch Chera and Walsh, and he's got such a depth of midfield that these guys can get a bit of continuity where they are. Where at the moment, like Connors was playing five minutes half forward, oh, piss off back, play in in defence a little bit higher up the ground, help help mm-hmm. there. But he was sensational in that first half. Go back and watch Connors' first half. Yeah, quite often he was the outlet. When everything, when they were coming at us, he was the poor sod in the middle of eight people who took the ball and then hit someone quickly. And he's, he's, he's games, quick and clean. That, that, that hard work tired them out, so we could kill them later. So yeah, I played Connors. It's not a it's, it's not a great output game, but again, half forward, not kicking any goals, not creating any scoring opportunities to get AFL average on the defensive craft. Incredible. Yeah, yeah he's quick and clean under pressure. That is kind of uh, Orazio Fantasia, uh, who I actually bumped into oh, no. at the Paran Market on Sunday. <laughs> and I usually don't, I, w- I wouldn't say anything to if I saw a player out. I'm like, nah, so I gave him a little bit. I'm like, good to have you at the club, Raz. Just let him know that he, let him know that he was welcome. But um, Orazio, skip game. forward if you're watching this on repeat, about 45 seconds. Um, uh, <laughs> so this is a problem. Orange Hexagon. I can't see any blue. Yep. Oh, it's come out in the defensive end and it's slightly appearing. It's hard on your screen over the effort indicator because of the ground ball gets. And that's quite bad to not be clearly out of the effort indicator when one of the major effort indicators is an elite stat is Mm -hmm. an issue. Wasn't quite the game for him. And I think Stephen makes a really good comment. He did look hesitant. And usually I would be on this show... Older guy, played the game, over 100 games. Should be more if he wasn't injured, but he is fit now. Should be our best player, and it's droppable. I'm Mm. actually different now with him. I think he needs to play again. He needs to play again. Stick by him, because he hasn't forgotten how it would be class. It just didn't happen. It didn't happen, and I I feel a bit of Harry Mackay about him when I was watching him. looked like he was second-guessing himself. Yeah. There was a few times he had the ball, particularly them two far right of your screen in the half forward line. He bowls both of them up, bowls both of them up. But his first instinct was right. But then he turned back inside and the opportunity went, give him more games, play him, play him three or four more games. Just say, Arazio, we love you. You're world class. Be fantasia. But this week, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, that he was subbed for a reason. Yeah. He made a comment in his first press conference with us about when he gets to a point where he's not thinking about the injury anymore and he's just thinking about his craft, that's when things will start to turn for him. And it kind of looked a little bit like that. You can tell he's got you can tell he's got the ability in tight um, to execute a skill. But yeah, his his confidence isn't back yet. And and that makes a lot of sense when you think about why. So um, I think next week when you're doing the selection table, I'd be curious to know as well. Is that is that a motlop? Is that you know is that a motlop? Also, he doesn't seem to be playing as forward as what I had expected initially. Is that also maybe because of what because we're experiencing effect, in the midfield? Uh, yeah, because of fact, yeah. You you see Voss, he's got this real obsession when players don't have touches who have got skill, and that's why I'm excited about seeing Jesse Motlop and Jack Martin back in the side. He's flinging them <laughs> at halfback. He's flinging them there and saying, get your hands on the ball. And some great coaches in my native soccer do this. We've seen Messi, Pep used to say, if he doesn't touch the ball five times in 10 minutes, he switches off and he goes home. So he moves him to the ball. He's like, go and find the ball, get invested. So I think part of it's that. But you know what? I I wouldn't be dropping him because he reminded me of Charlie Kernow against St. Kilda. Do you remember he kicked that goal off one step? I lost Manana, right, when, yeah. when he returned from injury. But there was about four times he got the ball there with space and then he goes to kick it and then he changes his mind and he fluffs the kick. Mm. I think I think Arazio just needs to remember he's Arazio Fantasia and that'll come by playing. It's not That'll come by playing, yeah. Playing when he him lined in up for against goal. Kohlberg is going to affect his confidence. Play him. Yeah, when he lined up for his, for his shot on goal, I thought this is it. This This, this will unlock him. He just, you know what he needs? He needs a goal in front of a Carlton crowd 
a packed crowd at the MCG. He needs to feel that. And I feel like that'll get it. Once he gets that going and that, that, I don't know if you call it muscle memory, but that memory of kicking big goals for big crowds comes in. He's going to want a taste of it and he's going to want to kick more. And I feel like that's, that'll come. There, there is a, there is a process with getting him back to his best. Um, and trust me, top line Arazio is everything yeah. we've ever wanted, but bad yeah. game. 3.5 for Raz. Let's go. Let's talk about Harry, mate. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> uh, Let's talk about Harry. Jeez. Hooray! Hooray! Where are you? Hooray! <laughs> where you at, bruv? Um, look, I mean, firstly, let's just look at the Pomdar. Like... <sighs> Taking the piss, mate. And you know the big thing as well? You'll see it with um, Charlie. The defence indicator leaking as well. Like, this guy isn't a forward. This guy isn't everything. Um, yep. You know what I have noticed about him? There's a, a lot of Jack Silvani's role because yep. we do look at what we're missing with Jack Silvani. A lot of Jack Silvani's role has been bestowed on this guy, which is why mm -hmm. he's getting insane kilometres. But look at that win percentage, one-on-one, 92%. -on -one, That's the best on ground. So when everyone keeps telling me Tom Lynch battered Lewis Young, well, Dylan Grimes needs to maybe think of a new career. Um, three goals, most for the team. Four contested marks, most for the team. And this is the new thing with, Char with, with Harry as well, being part of them chains, which again is Jack Silvani's job, being that last kick, being that conduit. We're starting to see Harry do that as well. Almost as perfect a game as a forward would do. And the yeah. fact that he's technically our second target in the forward yeah. line is scary, bro. Yeah. And then, like, he's, he's, these stats that we've got up here are obviously very critical. And there's also another one that you can't fit there, but seven tackles. Mate. Seven. Seven tackles. Mate. I mean, look at the defensive indicator. He's a, he's a forward, ladies and gentlemen. He's not just a forward. He's a big one. Yeah. Honestly, special. Incredibly, incredibly special. Yeah. If this is a sign of things to come for Harry's year, mate, <laughs> don't get the Kool-Aid out just yet, but I'll just 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 bring it out of the drawer and put it on the table um, because, yeah, it's, it's looking it, – he's just looking confident more than anything. Uh, and the confidence comes from preparation. He's obviously done that. You know what I want to say as well is if you take if you give him his goal Bang. kicking from last year, right? He he has scored a seven point five. Mm. So just give him his goal kicking actually last year. So all these people who were saying last year he was shit, all the media, he's still better than the average forward without the goals. Now the goals are there. Oh shit, we've got a problem. <laughs> oh, I mean, like when we win the flag, that's your fault. You made him do this. Yeah, yeah. Harry, yeah, ten. No, that's, that's amen. Harry, Harry could Look be. Look at his smile as well. He's getting yeah. bigger the more tens we give him. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Harry gets a ten, and we move on to Matt Kennedy. Uh, a lot more, I would say, as a forward this week than what we saw last week. Uh, I mean, circumstances changed, opponents change, and I think they spoke about it a little bit more throughout the week, probably to maybe to prepare us a little bit. There was a Carlton Media um, video I remember seeing about him talking about it. Um, so let's unpack Matt Kennedy's game. It was a very interesting game. Um, you actually found that he started to have success. Cowan tried something which, in hindsight, is genius. At the time, if you told me it, I would have probably gone, you're crazy. But Jaden Short was starting to take the piss. They put him at halfback, and they know Cowan's general susceptibility is halfback flank against. And suddenly we saw Kennedy go there. And I'm like, oh, this could be a problem. But it worked pretty well because he's a bit stronger than Jaden Short and was bringing it to ground. And there, them forward 50 ground ball gets. He, he couldn't do anything. Short was like, oh my God, what do we do? The goal was taken well. Defensive pressure, that's not so good, but pretty good. 
from his distribution, particularly from that 55 out. This is a player, though, that I am concerned. I do like Gav's comment about Motlop and Martin. It feels like he's a midfielder, but Voss isn't trusting him with that. So it feels mm. like this is like a, you're a Jack Martin, Jesse Motlop, but we haven't got one yet. So you're the stopgap. And it, it, it feels like I'd love to see him just get a bit on the ball where yeah. he's naturally good. Because I feel like this guy could benefit from it. But you know what? You do what you do. And his effort indicator through the charts. So, uh, you know what? Role player. We keep saying it. Clubman. We need yep. every, Ed I mean, look, Turner too, this guy. Yeah. Every week will present itself a different set of circumstances. And, you know, that's that's what it's going to be. That's what it was for him. He's, he's, he's probably not a first choice midfielder. And that's probably why he finds himself filling this role. Um, but not sulking a, and just doing well, it, mate. Correct. So a 5.5. Did I see correctly that he got engaged? I believe so, yes. I uh, think I saw I believe... that. I should have made sure, but I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, we could have made so, it up. So if that's Kennedy. true, congratulations, Matt Kennedy. <laughs> and if it's I, not... I, I hope his missus is not watching. And it's like, we know some intel and she hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a 5.5 uh, Charlie Kerno. Charlie Kerno. you know I didn't know he had his face busted open until I got home and watched and saw the photos of it didn't see it at the game incredibly hot I've got to say Mrs. Pom always says chicks dig scars yeah I've, you want to know how I, I got these scars <laughs> I, I, I feel I, I feel her after seeing him it, it, it made him better looking but Look at this. So go back, just visualize the Harry one. Yeah. See the defense, the defense pulling in. But I want to show something intercept marks. So we talk about getting people in. He was out of the game for a while and Voss deployed him quite behind the ball. Yeah. So again, Voss really learning that mantra of get players involved. Goals good. Charlie's ruining the averages for goals as well because they're kicking so many at the moment. The averages for goals are. A nightmare if you're a key forward. They need to stop. Contested marks, though, again, he's starting to bring that to his game over the last two years. And the score involvements, the score involvements that Harry and Charlie provide each other is incredible as well. They really do work. So, splendid. And Alex makes a great point, yeah. He... Bit of, bit of Harry kicking, you could say, this week. Um, it wasn't his Sunday best. You know what I'm starting to notice about Charlie? So do you remember when he first got to the club and a lot of the fans, all of us were talking about like, oh, you know, one day he's going he's gonna to be like Kuda. And then obviously he got injured and then it was like just getting back to playing footy, forget about, you know, he could be a midfielder, he could be put anywhere in the ground. We are starting to see him behind the ball, probably at the back end of last year we saw it, Gold Coast. And then we've seen it twice now in both, you know, in both games this season. I feel like he, this is this is the beginning of the next layer of Charlie Kerno, and I'm so here for it. I mean, there's something amazing about it. I mean, uh, still what scares me is, and this is probably an area of concern for Carlton, out of all the forwards, he was ranked number one for ball usage in contest on the ground. So yeah. ground ball gets, things like that, balls in history of you. Key forward shouldn't be doing that. So that is screaming yep. crummers. Mr. Fantasia, if you're watching, we need that from you. But uh, Charlie finds a way. And it, this is the best Harry and Charlie we've seen. Their individual yep. leads. Someone said it on the watch log and they were so right. How many times did we watch them when they first started playing together a couple of years ago? Bang, bang, just going into each other. Now the separation for them leading is a dream to watch. Like the mm -hmm. synergy... Amazing. So, Charlie, still my favourite player. Great game. Fantastic. Uh, okay. So, an eight for Charlie Kerno. We love it. Leader. Leader Charlie. It's the new era. Uh, TDK. A game, another game that I, what, that I appreciated more when watching the replay. He's starting to become a moments player. He's starting to become a player that when the, the need arises, uh, you know, when it gets really hot and intense, he lifts. This is a man who I, I would say 
probably the best Ruckman performance I've seen from a Carlton Ruck since Cruiser in his well, prime. Yeah. Because there was a lot of Cruiser about this game yep. biding his time. And the one thing with Nank is they don't call him Nank the Tank for nothing. In the fourth quarter, he's got the same aerobic capacity as Conor McGregor in the first round. He's cooked. It's game over. If you can get him to the third, he's tired. He's gassed. Once that started to happen, in TDK was like, all right, mate, let's take you into deep water. And he took him into deep water. And the amount of energy, there's a little thing. Go back and watch the first quarter, how he rests his body now. It's very cruiser-like of making them have to jump, making them have to move putting his body in the way, always expelling it. There was a great passage of play in the stoppage where he's leaning on on Nank for no reason, but he's putting the body weight. And you listen to Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury says it's the hidden, the dark art of boxing. When to rest and when to lean on your opponent makes opponents feel like they've run a marathon. Mm -hmm. When you're big and you're strong and you rest in the right way. TDK is learning that, so did Cruiser. And look, five score involvements. Finally, we can talk about score involvements from a Carlton Rook. 28 hit outs, best on ground. Six pressure acts. Our big guys go mental at the moment with pressure. And score launches from Rook contests, three. This game plan, get the ball fast, get the ball forward quick, suiting him. And roll indicator, actually, the best player on the ground was TDK for role indicator, basically right. saying being above average or better for things that are defined by what we recognise as a Ruckman. That's that's incredible. Wow. Well, he scored a seven, which is a great result. He is just coming along nicely. Just it is, and, and that's along. a consistency issue yeah. there, why it's not a 10. But, do you know what I mean? He, he, he worked his way around that game, and in my opinion, the best Ruck performance, because... Mm -hmm. It looked bad at first. Nan Curvis got the better of him. Once he worked him out, it was game over very quickly. Mm -hmm. And tell you what, if we can get that fourth quarter, two quarters. Absolutely. Uh, Pommy, I see a ratings card next, but I don't see a heat map next. Is it okay, Chera well, that's next? Let's just talk about it and I will. Let's talk about Chera. B. Let's talk about you. Me. Uh, interesting with TDK as well. He played 65% uh, time on ground in the third quarter. I was watching Saba's review this afternoon. Uh, they couldn't get him on the ground. Something had happened. Uh, the ball was on the other side of the ground or whatever the case may be. Uh, and Tom couldn't get on the ground. So that might have something to say for why he, he might have been a little bit more fresh uh, in that fourth. Uh, but nonetheless, still a great game. Mate, and Gav makes a great point. Massive improvement from last week. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. very similar. Nank and Mac Oscar, very similar in how they play. Mm -hmm. So Cruiser probably takes 50% of that, but TDK is starting to have a brain. I've yeah. uploaded it, sorry. You have? What number are we at? I, I kept um, it numerical. 32, 34. Oh, what? There. Oh, have I fucked it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, sorry. That's all what right. Is it? What number is it? 33? I believe it's 33. Yes, correct. Okay, straight away. It should be at the we'll bottom. We'll get this up while we're waiting. Da, 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 da. There we go. All right. Chesney. Um, I don't know how to look at his game. I thought he was down on his output. Um, that's well, That was my initial reaction to his game. Took his moment. Kicked a really important goal. Um, which helped win the game at the very end, which is okay. But how did you view his game? See, the efforts there, the roles there, overalls there, defence, absolutely brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Again, we're, we're looking, though, with midfielders, the, there's no excuse for not having offensive stats. Also, a little bit part of the role as well. You saw Dustin Martin when he went into the midfield. He was given to Chera at times which Carlton really struggled with that matchup and then eventually got on top of it. He was very, very defensive, though, this one. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He was very, very defensive, and you can see they're very deep, very deep for Chera. Chera, usually we see that hot spot um, towards the top of his head on your picture. 
underneath the middle circle where the bounce is. So very mo- a lot more deeper from him. Again, clearances and pressure outs not there, but the tackles, the last line. So he was deployed a lot more defensively this week than we did. And I wanted to highlight the uncontested because he was huge, huge in being the outlet. So a lot of this here is sacrifice. So George Hewitt is definitely now Lieutenant Cripps. And it's obvious. Hewitt can't do what Cherry can do. So this was a very more reserved game for him and it just didn't quite peel off. And there's no surprise Cowton struggled in the stoppage and stumbled in the clearances. And Chera was available. Was available. We just didn't hit him. So good defensive game though from him. And you know what? You get him though. You get him because he's a high level player. Mm-hmm. 5.5 for Chez. I, I've definitely seen him play a better game than that. But I've not seen him kick many clutch goals like that. So uh, you take it when you win. George oh, Hewitt, man. mate, consolidated his first game of the season. Uh, he looks – he's another one that looks in really good nick in the way he's covering the ground. Without a shadow of a doubt, like, honest, I can't tell you how important this player is. Like, th- this player is – is is the midfield. Everything yeah. stops without George. And look at that there. You know, see what I said about Mr. 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 Chera. I don't ever want to see anything in that offence. I don't. Because it's not his job. He just hangs back there and he's a bull. And we talked about Dusty. Dusty struggled when he went up against Mr. Hewitt. Struggled yeah. when th- they had that matchup. Look at that. Leading player on the ground with the clearances. Six tackles, the ground ball gets, the pressure acts. This guy is a pain in the ass, And he's allowing Cripps to be the sexy Cripps. He allows Walsh and Chera to have less defensive responsibility. Absolutely. You can, you can, it's clockwork, George Hewitt. You just know what you're going to get. and You do. You need these players. Need these players he really do. He 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 just looks sharp. He just looks back. He just looks. This it's the best version of George. Just looks back back to his confident and fit best. Uh, it's a long season, and he may need to be managed throughout the year uh, as they come. Such is the way he plays. But yeah, it's been a nice start. I've really enjoyed oh, what he's been able to that do. Office, that offense offense indicator as well could also be the same kind of chart for his ability to answer questions with in interviews, could it? We love it, George. <laughs> like appearance, smile. <laughs> Mate, the man's not here to do anything other than the work. That's the lesson that's been learned. He works, so, doesn't he? I mean, you know, he he's, he, he was that kid at school who got straight A's, but as soon as the bell went, his bag was packed five minutes before. He was gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, no birthday parties just uh <laughs> he was out of there uh next up we have got Lockie Fogarty fast becoming a fan favorite Mr Fogarty um very much so let's talk about his game you see this is where the forward line definitely needs that makeup at the moment right of mm. This guy has nailed the defensive side of things. And look, effort indicators through the charts, defensive indicator through the charts, overall pretty good as well. He's not going to be a goal kicker. And I, I think we can all establish that. I don't think that's his strength. All the great teams have a lock it in man. And Fogarty is the lock it in man. And yep. he does this job better than most in the league. And I was watching the other teams this week. He's a real, real, like he's a pain in the ass for the opposition because no one gets an easy kick. He's selflessly running. So, so good to see. He's not scared to get back as well. And this is something that we used to say about Durden. Durden got lost in transition at times when he'd come back. This guy's right back forward. Like there was a few times he's pressured the defense with us and then he's back forward straight away. Two way running. Cal and I would say, I've got nothing to back this up other than sheer love and belief, but I reckon by a country mile, we are the fittest team in the league. I, I, mm. I don't think anyone comes close to our fitness. From what I've seen over th- two rounds, the fitness of every boy seems insane. And Fog, yeah. animal, man, animal. Yeah. I did mention earlier that, you know, Chera took his moment and Cripps set up the goal. The ball actually went from Cripps to Fogarty to Chera. And he's another one, similar to Cunningham. 
quick and clean in tight. Oh, he, mate, he just, he just, just does it, doesn't he? He just does it every game. And like Davey says, kicks goals. Kicks a goal, we're looking at an eight. Do you know what I mean? Some offensive, but... You know, if, if if you put Fantasia and Motlop there, you're going to have to play Fogarty. Yeah. You, you need yeah. the defensive craft. And he allows Cunners to have the day where he can't be bothered. And I agree with Davey. I, I want him to be selfish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I said it on the watch along. There was two times where I'm like, just have a crack, mate. Like, I don't care if it's a behind. But team first. And I love that. He's always looking to give it to someone someone else. And you know what? There's a player down at Cattery who plays like this guy, Brad Close. And yes. you ask any Geelong fan, I mean, they make out like it's fucking Chris Judd, mate. <laughs> like, like, do you know what I mean? They talk about Brad Close like he's Judd, mate. But he yeah. is just a bog-standard, hard-ass, I-don't-take-any-shit forward. And you know what? When he's going to give them dinky handballs away, that's going to be Motlop, and Motlop's going to bust out a celebration, and we know Motlop's goal-led. This guy looks blood-led. He yeah. looks like he just enjoys the scrap. Mm-hmm. So a six for Fogarty. Pommy, I'm going to get you to upload number 40 because I've got 39 coming up, and that is Jack Carroll, the young man who is just starting to come out of his shell. That's how I'm, that's how I'm seeing him. I bump in, bumped into him briefly. Hall of Fame function as well. Um, I remember when I first met him a few years ago, he had just gotten to the club. He had this nervousness about him, this, you know, really shy young man. And just to hear him speak and and just hold conversation. I mean, it's a, it's a little thing. I don't know what that means for how he performs on field. But yeah, I think for all the questions in the preseason around, you know, what are we going to see from Jack Carroll? We're starting to see him emerge it's it's really exciting for him i don't think there's many people in the world i mean we had huge raps on this show when we drafted him so huge raps we he was a baby he was the youngest player there so we were like treat it as a two-year plan before we judge him as a draftee i think if anyone though had said as jack carroll fans round one richmond at the g ninety thousand people no sam walsh the guy who's going to be sam walsh on the ball is Jack Carroll, you'd have probably gone, oh, fuck. Oh, no. But this guy here, it was very Sam Walsh-like in that department on the ball. Dominating the centre clearance, no nonsense. Get the ball, get it going forward to the advantage of my runners. Score involvements, involved in nearly all the handball chains in the second half. Hard pressure acts, hard on the deck, a real beautiful all-round game. And probably, my, probably outside of Cripps, the best midfield hexagon. Like, mm. it, it's synergetic. We're seeing him work in all avenues. But we talked about we had a very defensive Chera, and we know we have a defensive Hewitt. For that to work, someone has to be offensive. And you know what? It actually fits perfectly if you put Hewitt's hexagon, blue hexagon. What's yep. missing that would make the hexagon? Completing the hexagon. Is this... I mean, it's one game that I'm looking at. He was the sub last week. Is this guy keeping Matt Kennedy away from midfield time? I reckon Elijah Hollands was probably like this back injury. This back injury, I reckon I could get in here. Do you know what I mean? I reckon I could get in here. I reckon Kennedy was thinking the same and suddenly Carroll's come along and said, yeah, sorry, boys. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? He's like he he he's the, he's got pole position, has he? And you know what? This was probably the dress rehearsal this week. And you know what? He he took it, didn't he? And he, he will he will get his chance against North to rekindle that bromance, which is probably my favourite bromance at the moment. Him and uh, Cripps. It's yep. a nice little bromance, isn't it? Um, just with the the radar, the pomdar. Um, it's a pentagon, right? It is indeed. Yeah, because uh, pentagon come from the Greek word penda, which means five. Hexagon come from the Greek word exi, which means six. Fucking hell. All, all, all right, ancient Greece with Terry Degani. Fucking Wednesday afternoon. I had to do it. It's 9.38 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a seven for Jack Carroll. Good result. Really good result. We're going to move on to Jordan Boyd. 
Love what I'm seeing here. Love what I'm seeing here. So during the glitches of this game, and it was very interesting, there's a lot of players that were rotated in really, really hard positions. And at times it felt like on the rewatch, Calton D disrespected Richmond. <laughs> Hence upon, that's genius. Sorry, really. that's just... just... <laughs> That's genius. But there was, there was times he felt like Calton were disrespecting Richmond because they really rotated in their danger zones. It was almost like a training game for the Blues. And Boydie was another one of these players that was put in that danger position. Go and take the game on, son. Go and be brave. Be bold. And he wasn't as... Last week, he was in the 90s for his kicking efficiency. Not quite yeah. as good. No one's going to get 90s all the time. Like If you do that, we're blood testing them to make sure that everything's legit. But 70 is still very good. But again, massive marks, massive tackles, really an outlet ball this week for him. And you talked about doing the Sam Doherty role. A lot of these players now are having to pick up the slack from where we see their average to make up for it. And Doc is the biggest target for Carlton on the outlet when we're trying to get mm -hmm. out. Boyd is starting to take that role as well. And he did it a plum. And I do love his little out the stoppage motion. And again, a lot of defence in our defence this week. Defenders defend. This guy here, look. Massive role, tick. Playing a different role, but also his offence. Always making count and move. His shot on goal, the Not first, at the point three milliseconds after it left his boot, I thought it was perfectly kicked. And then it just went offline. It would have just capped off the whole narrative about him because he is a beautiful kick of the football. Um, wasn't to be. It was, un it was unfortunate. Um, got to take your moment when they when they come. But defensive half pressure axe, Richard. Mm. DHPA six point five for Jordan Boyd. As we move on, we've got a couple more. Maddie Cottrell, who we will pause because he was given a three year extension, or well, he signed a three year contract extension that will kick in at the start of twenty twenty five keep him at the club until 2027. Um, he has been on five rookie deals. He's been on the rookie list up until this year. So congratulations to Cotters. Pom, Matt Cottrell, his game. Yeah, again, look at his heat map. A lot of these players tried at that high half forward, that high half forward. And it's definitely an area that Voss is, I think, doing a little bit of in-game training exercise. Who is the man? And I I do think it will come down when everyone's fit and firing that there's probably about eight names playing for two roles on this side. Cottrell, yep. Mr. Reliable, though. Do you know what I mean? You can see there, look, just above just above the Pomegon, just slightly in everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened to your audio, but he was, he was his solid self. And we found a six for him. Pom, have we got you? I don't think we've got Pom. No. <laughs> we'll bring him back when we can. Uh, okay. I think he's back. We're going to finish off with Corey Durden, who was the sub. You with us? Yeah, sorry. The internet, something fell on it. You got Joe's Wi-Fi going on there, mate. <laughs> no, I've got the what's it called? I, I, it's Starlink, but something not the receiver. No, that's okay. Uh, Corey Durden, the sub. Okay, so we see here. Look, we've score adjusted it. So you all wanted score adjustments. So you can see at the bottom disclaimer because I know what you people are like. You're gonna be like, "Oh, Pom, it doesn't say this." They've adjusted them as if you played four quarters. <laughs> can I mean? I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you. And you can see a very good game for the time and almost an identical heat map to Mr. Owies. Do you know what I mean? Really deep forward. But what is really interesting is the pressure indicators. He's really fighting for that pressure job. I said, look at look at Owies. He'll be like, I can defend better than you. We need to see the offense, though. We need to see the offense from him. I want to see a bit more selfishness from him. But... I really like the energy you brought. Really like the energy you brought. And you know what would be interesting? Does Voss, if Fantasia is dropped like people want, you'd say Durden probably did enough in his brief little cameo with his energy to probably warrant it. 
Yeah. Well, they do. They, they clearly love him on the in the uh, in this in the selection on the selection table. I don't know what we do with Durden Motlop, Always Fogarty, and Fantasia. I don't know what they do. I don't know what we do, but I love that it's the issue that we have. Because you, you have you to find a way back. of not being so defensive, and that's going to be an interesting thing for Voss because it yep. feels like at the moment we've got two offensive guys, Jesse mm-hmm. and Owies. Yep. Fantasia could be, but he's trying to find that happy medium. And I think Paul um, makes a great point. Elijah will come in this mix because he's defensive, but he's more known for his offense. Ashton, known for his offense, can't defend. So it's going to be an interesting one well, of how to out and negate that. It'd be an interesting video to do potentially. Maybe we can do it at another date. Like put those six names, you add Ashton in there, you add Jack Martin, not Jack Martin. I think Jack, Jack Martin's available, he would play. But these young guys, Dirt and Motlop, Moya Fogarty, these types, like if you had to pick two of the six or three of the six, where would you go and where will they end up? Um, it's but super it's good interesting. To, it's good to see Corey back out there. Um, five point five for him. Got to bump into him. You know, I said this to him um, after the Hall of Fame event. It was the first time that I've been around him where I've noticeably said to myself, "Oh wow, like he's really, like he's really matured." And again, it was that just the way he holds conversation. Um, just really cool to see. It's really, really cool to watch that happen. He's that player, though, isn't he? That I think we've defended Fantasia. This guy's hardly played as well. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this guy's been in and out. So, that forward line, see what we said about Kerno and Mackay. Took them a while mm. to learn what each other do. We seem to be changing our forward line, in the smalls, every week. So, we need that just little consistency, and I reckon they'll flourish. Mm hmm. All right, let's have a look at the team. There it is. There it is. Your defenders, your midfielders, your forwards, and your bench. Wow. And you can see, so last week, we had just a blanket of yellow with the occasional, occasional. Now you see how you formulate a win when some players are down, some players are higgledy-piggledy. You can see here that, again, like we said last week, the key battlegrounds, you're getting your best players out. Best players are performing. I do think Harry and Kerno, if they rank 10 and 8, it doesn't really matter. The conversation's over. But from a team perspective, again, where there was a bad player, there was a player willing to do his job and step it up. And I don't mind it. If Fantasia is going to be a three, he's, in my opinion, he's Jack Martin, one or 10. Like, mm. so for one or 10 to occur, everyone around him has got to be 6.5 and get some into the seven. But you know what? For an engine room that got battered at times, really struggled that midfield to get some ascendancy this week. Real strong performance from the back line. Transition. Look, look mm. at that. Look at them names. Transitional names. McGovern well, that was the story. Here. And that's been the story of the first two games, isn't it? Um, the big criticism, can Carlton change the way they go about it? I'm going to give it two more games before the the narrative turns to Carlton have lost their contested side of the game that they had last year and therefore they can't win the flag. Last year it was, they don't have a transition game. You've got to be in the top three in the competition to win a flag. I can't wait. Hey, Kingy, Gary, where you at, baby? These boys are <laughs> turnover merchants now. Just have transition. Mate. Where are you? Where are you, boys? Now nah, they've done really well, and you know what? Look, I mean, beautiful, beautiful side, isn't it? Do you know I mean? And you yeah. know what? It's quite scary. Like I was thinking about this today. Like things I didn't like about the game, and I was like, "But you got Walsh, man, to come back into this. Like, you got Weir in. Like all my issues that I have yeah. with this team are sorted with yeah. personnel. Like, yeah, but they're winning." As well, without him. So it's, it's kind of stiff to drop a player. But, you know well, what? Well, I mean, it's going to be... I mean, I, th- I think I can say five names who I believe, and I'm, maybe most of us believe, would definitely come into this team. Weedering, Walsh. Yeah. I think Marchbank would definitely come into this team. Don't know how, but he would. Um, 
Jack Martin. Yeah. And I truly believe Elijah will be in this team. The problem, <laughs> bro. The problem. I really do. And that's tough because what? Who? who is coming out? I can make a case for two, maybe three, but five, difficult. It's going to be, it's, mate, it's, it's a tough job. And you can, and I, I do think part of it this week we saw Ooh, a lot. Mob. Oh my God, oh, that's six. Fucking hell, we got Shh. half a list is out now. Mate. <laughs> Get out, half a list out, Terry. Why are we not wow. panicking? Wow. <laughs> okay, back to panicking. If we had six of our best 22 out three seasons ago, forget it. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I, I agree. I, I think Elijah is a real case. Now, I think the data's backed it up today. Voss is trying that area, and Jack Martin's a week away. We've heard great reports from Ashton. We know Elijah likes to play that Connors role. This could be a really interesting time because Connors, even though he's adding this craft, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's adding that craft from the threat of Elijah. You're suddenly mm. seeing the defensive work because he's like, Hang about, this guy runs all day. Yeah, like if I don't kick goals, I'd, I I'm useless. Voss is going to pick this guy, and Voss has already proved your high your high ceiling, your fictitious talent means fuck all. He wants something he can bank his hat on. So mm -hmm. it's amazing these players that didn't defend last year, didn't have the pressure ratings, suddenly have got comp who can. Very beautiful place to be, and I can't wait to see it develop. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for the ratings for round one. There, uh, there's 211 of you watching here. I'm going to assume that you're all subscribed to the channel. So if you're not, please, that's all we ask. This content is free and will stay free. We only ask for a subscribe. Subscribe to the BA channel. Subscribe to the Pommy and Oz YouTube channel. Uh, this is a phenomenal new series that we've just... I don't know. What, what have we done here, mate? <laughs> this all came about after Essendon. Let, let, let it be known for those who are new to this show. This show really took a turn after Essendon and we added the statistical, analytical, um, informed, evidence-based approach to this, to this show. And it's, it's looking good, mate. It's in good shape. This is basically like what an AFL show would be if yeah. they actually put time into it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's how I describe it. Fox footy with time. True. Fox footy with effort. Yeah. So right now we are the blue... Are we the blue hexagon or are we the orange hexagon? I mean, a pentagon. Oh, we we we'd be the Crips Pomegon, the Crips Pomegon. So oh. the blue one that's just engulfed. Hey, hey the Pomalytics, mate. <laughs> you you know it's really hard when you start adding pom to things. It's really hard to get out of the habit. Like I find it encroaching my life. Like 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 literally affects my ability to communicate with a human being. <laughs> like, like it's really bad. Even my kids start adding it as well. Like, like, wait, where are you watching the footy? What channel are you watch the footy? Oh, Pom Footy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like it's actually getting it's getting a problem, chat. I'll be honest. It's a problem. Yep. Uh Daryl, this is you said, what did you ask? Is this a PowerPoint? No, it's, it's just, we just use StreamYard and uh, Pommy creates the graphics that go along with this show and I click the buttons. That's pretty that, much that how it works. spoken like a man who has been in way too many of them stupid team meetings at work where some <laughs> old guy comes up and just presses a button. <laughs> Feel you, Daryl. I've been in them as well, mate. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Good night. Kalinichta. Have a great evening. Pom, thanks very much. See you all very soon. Very, very soon. Hey, Media Watch Friday. It's happening. Can't wait. Can't wait. See you then. Peace.